um, the tunnel, the escape tunnel was over 100 meters long. When they were trying to get out, it was in the middle, well, it was late winter and one of, one of the worst winters in over 30 years in this part of Europe. Um, when they first tried to get out of the tunnel, it was frozen solid. And there was quite a bit of snow on the ground all over the countryside. So uh, one of the accurate things in the movie was when the uh, guys were getting out at intervals, the last guy to be, who was detected by the German sentry, uh, they were just short of the tree line. That, that was accurate. And you'll see in here, I don't, well, we're here actually. So we're here. The movie showed uh, it wasn't winter. Right, in the movie it wasn't winter time. But they had uh, quite a bit of snow on the ground in reality. It'd be hard, easy to track people. Yeah, very easy to track people in the snow. So we're a little early, actually. I mean, we're operating like a crack drill team at this point. Sure. Uh, we are, we are so awesome. Yeah. We're shipped to ground. All right, I'll let them, we can uh, dismount, I'll let them know that we're here. Dismount. I want to know where Steve McQueen was put in solitary. That's right. And bounce his base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Winston. I think it was a satellite can. Yeah. Uh, they had a you know, seat wall there. Starlight look three and the next to it had Starlight AC. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to explain mm. what Starlight AC was. Okay. So, my name is Marek, so I'll, I'll be your guide. Uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, okay, I think most of you know the movie The Great Escape mm -hmm. and a uh, very good war movie but not exactly correct. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. Uh, the beginning of the movie, the camp life, uh, the, the, pre um, the preparing of The Great Escape is, is very, very accurate. Brits and Americans work together. The, the ending the movie is not correct because the American of the American officers they didn't escape because all Americans were moved from from north compound to the south compound six me six months before the great escape so they had no chance to escape actually they, they saved their lives because as you know uh, 50 of the 50 from the great escape they were they were killed by by Gestapo 
Uh, I will tell you more about the Great Escape and, uh, and, the, and the Stalagruth III, but I'd like to show you this map here. Uh, and I'd like to explain you uh, Stalag 8C. Uh, we are now uh, south of, of the town Zagań. This part of today's Western Poland was Eastern Germany before the before the war. In 1944, in 1945, the borders of Poland were moved to the west. So we can say actually this is a kind of new Poland, <laughs> new land we received after the Great Escape. They took us the Eastern Poland. So they just moved our borders. So this was Germany. In this town. Today we say Zagań, German name Sagan, S and Z. Typical military town, the, the biggest tank division now from Polish army, and uh, before the war the German troops also. There was also huge army, German army base here, and also POW camps were set here in this area. Exactly here in this place we are now was the kind of uh, exercise training area for the for the British uh, for, uh, for, sorry for the, for the German troops there was a small camp here military camp and in 1939 the camp military camp was turned into POW camp called Stalag AC Stalag is German word means POW camp 8C this part of today's Poland, uh, in a, another way, uh, the Germany, Nazi Germany, was divided into 21 military districts. Silesia, the land we are now here, was district number 8. So all camps built by Germans in district number 8 were called 8. Stalag 8, A, B, C, D, E, so five camps. Uh, this camp, Stalag 8C, was uh, the biggest. It held 49,000 soldiers. 49,000. You can imagine that the, that the town is about 26,000 people. And it was the same during World War II. But the camp was for the soldiers, for the enlisted men and NCOs. And uh, it was against Geneva Convention to use soldiers as a slave workers. The Germans, they did it. And they took about 30,000 soldiers from here and they sent them to the work camps around the Silesia. So we think, we believe that about 15,000 soldiers, POWs, were here in Stalag 8C. It was exactly here. All around us were blocks made of bricks. You will see. Uh, aerial picture up uh, in the main exhibition room. These so, all Allied soldiers? Most of them were French soldiers. When, when the Germans, they, they invaded France, so they took thousands of thousands of French soldiers. So actually we can say that Stalag 8C was the French POW camp. Uh, the camp was administrated and run by Wehrmacht, which was German land forces. Stalag Luft 3, <coughs> which was actually just next door and was built in 1942, was built by Luftwaffe, German Air Force, and was designated for the officers from Allied Air Forces. Total number of POWs here, about 10,000 airmen, 7,000 American airmen. 7,000 Americans, so actually, as we can say that Stalag 8C, 8C was French camp, Stalag Luft 3 was American camp. Only 3,000 RAF, including Canadians, New Zealanders, Poles, Brits, uh, Czechs. However, the Great Escape was a British operation. I will, tell you, I will tell you later. So, the huge, huge area, so from this point, the museum is here, to the east, I mean to the eastern edge of the camps, is about two miles. 
So you can imagine how big was this area. Today, uh, all this area belongs to Polish army uh, as a training area. But they, of course, they don't use they, they don't use the campsite as a training area. They use the the land south of Szagań, and it, it is actually the biggest training area in Poland. So as I said, we have the biggest tank division in, in, uh, in, 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 in Polish army here in, in Zhaka. So, both camps. Stalagate C, 1939. Stalag Luft III, 1942. And uh, as we will go upstairs, you will see on the right small display dedicated to the World War I, because there was also a POW camp here in Zhagan during World War I for French and from, for Russian soldiers. But uh, uh, we don't have much information about this camp, including, uh, except some uh, rare pictures. And you will see the, these pictures on the right when we will go upstairs. So, let's, let's go upstairs to the plains. Australians, New Zealanders, Poles, uh, even one, one, airman, one airman from Greek, from, I mean one Greek, and Czech officer, uh, even from Belgium. Uh, this is, a, of course, the very, very short story of the Great Escape, kind of comic book. Uh, the picture was, t was made in Canada in 1999, only in 250 copies. So that was, the, it was kind of limited edition. We have number 29, and uh, we have number 88 in the replica of the half. So we have only two copies in Zhagan here, and one copy is about 10 miles from here, from, from here in a small school named after a light urn. So only three copies of this picture in, in Poland, made by uh, Bill Holder in Canada. So th this is the nation from, 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 from Canada. Uh, okay, let's go, uh, let's see the, the main room. Three sections. Uh, section number one: uh, temporary exhibitions, including uh, portraits of the 50 from the Great Escape, made by very young artist from England, Jonathan England, and he made this picture. There, these are originals. He made them from the powdered milk called Clean. Powdered milk was sent to the camp in the Red Cross boxes, food parcels, and they used these cans as a ventilation system in the tunnel because there was no air inside. The tunnel was very, very deep. So our friend, he bought some powdered milk, he made a special mixture with the powdered milk and he made this very nice portrait of the 50 from the greatest. Uh, you can see the the very nice American flag here. Uh, this is our salute to, to our donors who, who supported the, the, the museum. And actually you can see the names of the, of the American, American uh, POWs from, from Stalag Luft III. Uh, many of them from this list, they are still alive in America. Uh, and they donated some money and or their families, relatives, they, they gave us some money to support the museum. So actually three days ago I came back from from Academy. I spent all day in Academy's library and I was just shocked. And we've met 17 uh, 17 uh, Kriegis, pre uh, prisoners. Oh my god. That's we are here. <laughs> we were here and you were there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the world is very small. Yes. Okay. Polish display. Uh, Polish, uh, Polish uh, airmen, Polish officers were in the camp. In this camp, about 112 Polish officers in in North compound, British compound, because Polish soldiers, Polish officers, flew with RAF when the Germans invaded Poland. Many of them escaped to. England and joined RAF. So we flew with uniform like this and we were treated as an allied air officers. So we, they used occupy block number 107 and the great escape block, the great escape hut was 104. 
So Channel Harry was from 104. So small display devoted to the Polish, Polish airmen. What's important? Six of them escaped in March 44 and they were killed. I mean, they were in this group of 50 killed by Gestapo, by secret German police. So these are these Polish officers. Uh, here in this, uh, um, we we have also a very nice uh, exhibition of the of the uniforms, uh, uh, representing uh, different air forces, including, of course, American Air Force, Canadians, uh, Royal Navy, French uniform, South African uniform. They flew with RAF, uh, New Zealanders, and. Australia. So many different. They were all in North compound. And now I'd like to show you the picture, the big picture of the camp, uh, Stalag 8C and Stalag Loop 3. The museum is exactly in this place. So you can see the blocks, the barracks, all around this area. Is that a real yard that came close to the camp? And you can see that the, the, the camp was built very close to the train station, railway station. And, uh, and that actually, this is the answer for the question why the camp was built in Zhagan. Because, as I said downstairs, Zhagan was a huge military town with huge army, German army base. Very important uh, military, military air, airfield here military factory which was here and the train station which was one of the biggest railway junctions in the in eastern germany so what 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 germans did they built the camp just near to the train station because because of bomb so the camp the town was never bombed by allies because of the camp so the camp was the human shield for the for the train station actually this is about from, from north compound to the to the train station road, what what is it would be 0 0.5 miles. It's just next to next to the train station. How close were the Allied troops on March 24 from the camp? Oh, no, they were far far away from here because the, two months before the war ended. Right? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I understood understood your question. Uh, you mean Allied troops? Yeah, when the escape occurred. It was in 44, wasn't it? 44? 44. It was in 44, 44, yes, March 44. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was March 44. Uh, Stalag Love 3 was built in 1942. The first was built the east compound and central compound. Here in the middle was the German administration compound. You see the trees. And in April 43. North compound, British compound was opened. In April 43, the Americans and the Brits were together. But starting from 1943, many, many American officers became a POWs. So the, the Germans, they decided to extend the camp. And they, in September 43, they built South compound for, Amer for the Americans. And in 1944, West Compound, which was also for, for the Americans. The Great Escape project started in uh, North Compound in April 43, when the Brits and the Americans were together. So they start to work together as a team. They dug the tunnels, they prepared the documents, false documents. They, 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 they made a, a civilian clothes from the uniforms. They did everything, but in September 43, six months before the Great Escape, all Americans were collected from here. For example, block number 106 was called Little America, here. Because there was, there was a large group of, of, of the American officers who lived here. All the American officers were moved to South Compound, so they had no chance to escape. So. The Germans, they thought that the, that the Americans were, were masterminds of the Great Escape. So they moved many guards with the Americans. So there was a little bit, uh, this, this, no tension, no, no, no guards in North Compound, so they could focus on the tunneling. 
Um, let's see the, the model of the British compound, the North compound. So, the great escape was the action of three founders, Tom, Dick and Harry. Nicknames Tom, Dick and Harry because the, the word tunnel was taboo. You can't use the word tunnel in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the camp. So, as you see, Tom and Dick were uh, to the west, uh, Harry to the north. Tom was almost ready to go in uh, August 43. They knew that the Americans were, will be moved soon to the south compound, so they decide to escape with Tom. But Tom was discovered by Germans. They found on September 1st, the Germans discovered Tom, they destroyed the tunnel, and soon after this, uh, on September 8th, the, all, the, the American officers were transferred to the south compound. This tunnel, the tunnel called Dick, was very short and it was also to the west. What Germans did, they started to build a new camp here. So, as the tunnel was very short, they, they decided to close the tunnel because the exit would be a new compound. <laughs> there was no sense to, 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 to dig. To, to, to dig this, this way. Tom, uh, I mean, the, the tunnel, tunnel dig was turned into a kind of storage place for the food, for the tools, uniforms. And they focused only on Harry. And, they, and it took about 10 months to build the tunnel, which was over 340 feet long and 30 feet deep. Mm -hmm. The question is why so deep? Because the Germans, they built special warning system and they dug uh, special microphones oh. in, uh, around the camp to detect any tunneling. Because the first tunnels, what, what you need to know, that the, 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 the prisoners, they built over 100 tunnels in Stalag of Three. Why? Escape is your duty as an officer. And it's, it, it's not only a duty. As the, the worst enemy in the camp is boredom. You have nothing to do. So they just found they found something to do. They made they, they made a tunnel. Because there was no punishment for the escape. Except a few days in the cooler. They didn't know that Hitler will decide to kill 50 from the Great Escape. So so the escaping was kind of sport for entertainment if you if you can say that. But at first it was your duty as an officer. So, the plan of the Great Escape was 200 people to escape in one night. The night 24 of March. The question is, uh, March here in Poland is, is, is not a good uh, season for, for the escaping. It's cold. So the question is why they, they decide to escape in March, because the Germans were close to find the tunnel. Because they, the Germans were also smart. They were also smart. They, 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 they were still searching the tunnel. In. Mm.